you may be recognizing this from a video from a few months back. Um, this is a 1967, I think, um, GE radio. That just... Oh, I know what that did. Okay. Thought it blew up for a second. But yeah, 1967 GE radio. And it's got this problem. I'll turn it up a little bit. It'll work, but if that thing is down, if you're pressing down on the air... It's actually a pretty good performer. But I think it's got a few cold solder joints. So, we're going to be taking a look at it. It's just very basic AM only radio. Um, I'm not even going to use any kind of paperwork for it. So let's get into the repair. So here's what the bag cover off. It's just your basic, probably four transistor AM radio. And looking back there, you can see that they use very shallow connections. Um, which is not really a good thing. There's a speaker for those like to actually smoke. You can see smoke coming out of it. It could be coming from the speaker. There's our filter capacitor. I wonder how many volts this uses. It has a power transformer, or is this... Probably does. Those don't seem like high voltage capacitors. What is this? Look at that big heat sink. So, yeah, I guess let's try to get this board out of here. We can take a peek at it. So we have the radio section out. It's got this weird glossy texture on it. It's kind of weird. So, let me try to find the cold solder joint. Maybe we can replace some of these capacitors because I'm sure that they're probably bad. The white ones from Japan, probably. Look at that thing. 150 volt at 50 microfarads. Maybe this thing is, does have high voltage. That's a 12 volt capacitor there, so I don't know, I'm kind of confused by this thing. That's the output transformer, that's not the power transformer. So, yeah. I'll try to see if I can find anything. Capacitors. So I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up now. And it looks like we might have a few somewhere in here. Um, let me try to find it. So the tuner is there. And I think the cold solder joint. somewhere in here, I don't know. Or something that looked like it could be a cold solder joint is in there, so I'll have to refine it and yeah, and solder it. So I think GE made quite literally a billion of these. So I want to see if um, they have the same thing that these ones have, where it looks like like the longer leads have been cut if you look, they've been like lopped off. Like there. It has it there. 
there, there. So it's like after they solder them, they just took a big scissors or knife or something and just went like that. Weird stuff. I already resoldered a few of them down here that looked like they could have cold solder joints. I might just touch up all of the ones that look like they've been lopped since it really wouldn't surprise me if they broke something while doing that. So yeah. It's probably good enough to test now. I think that this coating here is flux. Kind of smells like it when it's being burned. So yeah. Let's see how does this ooh that's warm. Oh my. Sounds like some of those could be rubbing. I'll have to look at that. And then we can test it. I do not like this. They're not rubbing. What it's doing is, well, they're not rubbing on each other, but what it's doing is it's rubbing on that resistor there. There's lines scored into it. That doesn't seem like a too good a design. I think that this right here is a replacement, this audio output transistor, since it has a date code of 10 of 73, which means 10th week of 73, I think, but then all the rest of the parts have a date code of 67. So either they were using a ton of spare parts and this, this is a 73, or else this is a 67 and then that was replaced, which seems more plausible. But I don't know, these were probably being made up until 76, 75, possibly even later than that. And they started in the 50s, with tubes instead of transistors. So, they made a billion of these things. They are very common. Very simple too. Seems to be working. But I'm not sure why the second half of the band is dead. I'm also not sure why it's doing that. That. That's weird. So, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. Um, but other than that, I seem to fix the problem that I was that I came here to fix. Volume control needs to be cleaned. Let's see if there's smoke. I see some smoke.
Oh, it sounds like the other part of the band is working. I'm at the low end of the band. Sounds like just like a case of bad connection on that volume pot. I can go grab my WD-40 and make everyone cry. Ah, yes. We are lubed for action. I wonder if the wasps would like WD-40. They come over here, I'll test it. Always going to have my eye on that thing now. Because it, it's, one of the, it's one of the ones with a stinger that goes like that. Directly from its butt. So, it's one of the scary ones. Maybe that's a hornet. But now it's going to be like half on the radio, half on the bug. Ah, it's coming. Alright, time to see if this worked or if this was a fail. We're back to square one. It's sensitive, but it works. Dry cleaners in Rice Lake, Northland Automatic Transmit. Station's a few miles away. That sounds like a cold solder joint, but I have no clue where it's coming from. We discovered that exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI, may be the reason for my stomach issues. This one will probably be a lost cause for now. 